MRI came back on chance and, and we'll lose him for the year with an ACL. So he's out. Um, so we've taken two, two pretty significant hits at the linebacker spot with Wallow and chance. And then obviously Marlin with his bicep, we've lost him. So, uh, that's kind of where we're at. This only new, new news from the injury front is, uh, is that one. So, um, but other than that, I'll let you guys ask questions. Knee that he's hurt twice before. Um, that I'm not clear on. I, I, I don't. I'm not sure. How much you, he had obviously a great camp of preseason. How much you pay it for a guy like that? Yeah, I mean he was playing uh, about as good a football as you could ask of a guy. He's he's really coming on strong and, and playing a really good brand of football for us. And uh, just yeah, heartbroken for him. He was he was doing everything we asked of him and, and doing it really well. So uh, disappointed for him. Disappointed for for us. But um, that's that's the way it goes sometimes. What's the latest on some of the other guys, Otis Reese, Luke Gifford, you know, at that inside backer position? Yeah, those guys are both in the protocol, so we should hopefully get them back uh, this week as is kind of tentative. Um, we don't have much to do with that. It's more it's, they got to get cleared independently. So, uh, But those guys are both should be cleared next week and should be good to go. And how about Cedric Gray? Um, Cedric's still dealing with the same thing he's had. Um, it's really a, it's a shoulder, but it's nerve-related, so it's it's more of a – when does it come back and how does it feel? So um, no real timeline on him at this point. Unsure is the best way to put it. Is Wiley still in protocol? Yeah, he is. He's in the same group. Those those guys, they're all kind of in the same, right about the same timeline. That that Seattle week is where they all popped up for the most part. So that's the, that's the hope. And, yeah. Is Cedric a guy who could be on the return to play to start the season, or is it too up in the air? Uh, too up in the air right now to know that for sure. Um, yeah, I'm not not totally sure where that would be at at this current moment. When you're a little bit shorthanded on in draft picks like you guys were this season, I think you had six, right? Mm -hmm. How how good is it that some of these undrafted guys can kind of come in and maybe earn a roster spot and supplement that rookie class? Yeah, anytime you anytime you got undrafted guys that can come earn a spot, that's. Uh, that's a huge benefit, you know. Uh, that and your and your late round picks, you know, your five, six, seventh round picks. If you can get contributions from those guys, um, that's huge for for the depth of your roster, um, for your, the cost of your team. I mean, there's a there's a lot of benefits to being able to hit those picks, and I think this year we've we've done a pretty nice job. I mean, um, we're looking at pretty significant contributions, I think, from all the guys in that draft class at this point. Um, and then obviously we got some some UDFAs that that are have, have made their mark as well. So. Um, that's how you build a team. That's how you build depth, and, that, and that's how you, you you find players. Is the work you do in those later rounds. And I think our scouts have done a great job in that process. Um, really, it's they're they're the ones that find those guys, um, and we got to keep doing that. That's how you keep building your team and keep building your depth. Is is hitting on those you know day three picks essentially that fourth through seventh round and, and your CFAs. So um, successful teams hitting those spots, and, and we need to keep doing it. Turk, or how's your process work for contacting guys and calling? Um, I think you. I think we have the benefit of a general manager that's been cut a lot of times, um, and so he understands the sensitivity of it. Um, he understands what it looks like when you're when you're having guys walking down and escorting them around a building and all that stuff. So um, we don't have a Turk per se. Our scouting assistants work that process, but we try to do it with as as much uh, as much dignity as you can um, for those players. Do you deliver? Do you deliver a message to guys who made it, or are they just? Do they just know when they don't get a phone call? Um, I think for the guys that that are unsure of their status, you like to let them know um, that they have made it. Um, you're also a little bit careful because just because you make it through the initial wave doesn't mean you make it through the the other wave that, that comes, um, and so you just sort of wait till it all plays out officially before you. Tell the guys made the team and you cut them a day later, so you be mindful of that. But um, yeah, guys that guys that have actually played their way onto the roster, you like to let them know. I think that's a cool moment as well for those guys. But um, most guys have a pretty good feel for where they stand, and it's just those last couple spots that you may have to let them know. Have you guys made a decision yet on, on whether you use one or the two IR spots available? Uh, not yet. Mm -mm. You talk a lot about being excited about different benchmarks in your first go around. Is this? The couple days of a benchmark that you're not excited about at all? No, not at all. Um, you know, like as, as I've said, it's it's uh, you got relationships with these guys. They play hard. They practice hard. They do everything you ask. Um, and and sometimes you're cutting good players. 
you know, sometimes you cut guys and that might be it for their football journey. Um, and some guys you cut that are going to go on and play for somebody else. Um, and you hope that they play well and you wish them well. But uh, it is not a process that um, is very enjoyable. I don't know if you can see the joy emanating from me today, but um, it's not fun. Uh, just because just the amount of respect you have for guys and what they've done and the, how they've gone about their business, um, you know, it means a lot to me as a coach and, and you appreciate it. Um, that's the best way you can you can go about it is just you thank them for their contribution and their efforts and and you hope that it works out and if you can help them in the future you try to but um, yeah it's my it's not a very fun benchmark to check off for me. How do you manage the week? Obviously a lot of roster moves me and made also trying to work ahead toward the Bears. Can you do some of that at the end of the week or how do you how to manage it? Yeah, we've kind of taken time on the Bears at various points just kind of through training camp. You know, it's week one always makes it pretty easy just because you have a lot of time and you have the off season in the summertime. And so a lot of pre preliminary work's been done um, and then we'll get into the game plan. I'm always really mindful of, of this time of, of the this this weird chunk of time where you don't want to spend too much time because it gets you overdo it and you overanalyze and you um, it just feels like the first game takes forever to get here once you get to the spot. So just mindful on, on getting guys back healthy, still getting some work in, but maybe a little bit more focused just on our our process and, and you start the game week when you start the game week because you already get an extra day with Monday. Monday's a bonus day on top of it. So um, a little bit more focus on ourselves and, and what we can improve over a couple of days of practice and then we'll get back into the routine of the season because you spend all this time on Chicago and it's your week one and all of a sudden week one's over and then they start coming every seven days. And so uh, the rhythm is, is a part of it too. You want to make sure you're kind of not doing more than you need to for the first game seems more modest than what we see some mm -hmm. play callers carry on the sideline. Is that the size of what you'll have in a regular season game and what's kind of your yeah. strategy as you put that together? Yeah, that's about that's about it. I mean, we carry, we got plenty of plays. Um, I think one of the things that I've learned over time is that you can have plays that you work on. You know, there's sort of, sort of like a uh, – how long are you going to cook a play for before it's ready for action? And so sometimes you carry some plays that you know you're not going to use and you kind of work on them week by week. And when they're ready, use that. Like with specials and trick plays and things like that, you have a core uh, of what you do that you can sort of call whenever um, that those plays are sort of always in the game plan. Um, and then you have your handful of game plan plays that, that you that you use and you have your run game plan. So um, the way it's all set up on the call sheet, generally we've kind of refined the number of plays we need in each section because you can only practice so many things too. And so that's that's a part of it, is making sure whatever we have on the call sheet, we have a chance to rep and practice. So uh, the quarterbacks get those throws, receivers get those looks, um, and then you try to carry over what you can that fits for the next week, because you got reps invested in it. And so I think that's generally been a successful way of going about it. But you see guys sometimes with a much longer one and wonder, uh, hey, what must be on there? Or how do, how do they get Yeah, I, I, I do. I, yeah, they're certainly ambitious. I mean, I've been around guys that have had those types of call sheets, and um, and and there's everyone's got their own process. You know, I just one of the things I really believed in is is being able to make sure that whatever you're calling, you're practicing, and so you get you guys give you guys the best chance of success, um, and hopefully you practice it for a while, and so that's why you have a a system in a sense that you can you can fall back on. But um, yeah, there's I, I do wonder sometimes some of that stuff is just information. You know, you have a lot of things on there. Even the back of my call sheet has a lot of end of game calls and two minute calls and things like that. That you know the amount of times I actually look at that back of the call sheet is very rare, um, but it's all on there. And so it looks like there's a lot, but it's not very usable sometimes. So uh, that's probably the best way I could describe that. When you went back through the film, how pleased were you with? how Will was able to survey the field and make the right reads, and also how he decided not to throw a block on the blown-up reverse. Yeah, no, that was a smart decision by Will. I told Will at the beginning of the game, uh, you know, look, man, throw the ball away. Like, we don't need a repeat of the, the goal line collision that you had against San Francisco. Um, he knows that. He was great. Um, and so we called the reverse uh, just to try to get the ball in, in Quan's hands. And, uh, they had been playing a bunch of uh, man coverage, and it, it would have been a lot better versus man, but we ended up getting quarters, and so there was really an extra hat over there. And, and Will made the right decision to just bypass the guy that in a game he normally would try to seal. Um, he just sort of ran to the sideline. Uh, there wasn't really much else that could have gone good on that play. That was probably one I regret, but, um, you know, just a chance to see if we could get ball in Jaquan's hands. But he did this, the right thing and the smart thing is avoid the contact in that particular spot. Um, but really happy with how he's played in the preseason, um, what he's shown, how he's managed the offense. He's, he's moved the ball, which is, is the name of the game for quarterbacks as we're trying to score points. And he's done that uh, with his opportunities. 
Um, and as I, as I said last night, you know, I, I understand that preseason records and preseason stats aren't predictive in any way, shape, or form of, of any future success whatsoever. Um, but it is, it doesn't mean nothing. You know, there's, there's, there's things that we take from it that matter. Um, and so I've just, I've been encouraged about where we're at. I think we still have a ways to go, but um, happy with what we've shown. Can you clarify the, the, the third quarterback rule under the league initially sound like they yeah. make a change and they didn't make a change. And then how much you think those two guys, uh, Mason and Malik did their part to to make the decision hard. Yeah, you have to, you got I mean, they have to be on the active roster, so you got to carry three. And that's usually, that's how it works. Um, you could still practice squad uh, a quarterback and then still elevate them, but they're still counting. It's not like a free spot. Like it comes across like you get a free spot for a third quarterback, but it's not. It's it's a roster spot and it's a real one, and, and you got to carry them on your 53 um, to get that emergency quarterback. So it's, I would love it if they just made it a 54 spot or a 47 spot on game day or whatever that is, or you could just carry a third quarterback and they can enter the game. If you need them to enter the game, that would be great, but um, that's not the way it works. And I know they don't want to necessarily pay a 47th spot on game day on top of it. So um, I get how all of it works and it sounds appealing, but it's still a roster spot at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, Malik really showed well for himself uh, in that game. I thought he played well. He put some really nice throws on tape. You still see his athleticism with the ball in his hand. Um, and then Mason just kind of continues to be like the epitome of consistency. And every time he goes in there, the team moves, he completes the ball, and um, we find success. And it's been really good to see. Uh, both of those guys have competed. I think they've both m improved markedly from when we first started in OTAs. And uh, I'm excited about what they've done. And whether that means we keep three or we keep two and put one on a practice squad or we just keep two, um, we're working through those decisions, you know, over the next 48 hours. And uh, but they've certainly made that decision hard, and that's their job, you know, to make that decision difficult and uh, put something positive enough on tape and make our conversations, you know, we have to really think hard, long and hard about how we're going to handle that. So I'm happy for both those guys for the way they've played and what they've shown. Is there some new rule regarding, or was there maybe just for one game regarding what you could look at on the surface? Yeah, we had um, the, the league been for the last couple of years now. They've um, they've introduced the the video uh, on the surfaces. We had it for the first game, uh, where you actually get like the 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 live video from the the series as opposed to just the still shots um, on the surface. And so we've done that. It's, that's happened now a couple of maybe three years now. It might even be more than that. They've kind of toyed and gone back and forth. I mean. High school teams have have video on the sidelines now, you know. So I think that that's that's trending towards probably something we'll see uh, sooner than later. I think for us, um, but they just they tried it for the first game and and worked through it, and then went back to still shots for the other two. So uh, it's always good though. It's it's I, I you don't have time to watch it necessarily. I think that's kind of the unique part is that um, you're going through the series so quickly that actually watching the the play takes longer, and you don't have enough time for all that. But it sure does help to have that live video. You can you can see what went wrong. Uh, with a little more clarity uh, than just a still shot. From Oliver, you know, from when you first started seeing OTAs to, to what he's been showing in the preseason. Yeah, he's another one of those guys that, that's shown well for himself. You know, um, he's he's got some size, you know, and he's got some, he can run. He's got some legitimate speed. You see it on the field. Um, he probably is faster than he looks, uh, if that makes sense. He's He covers a lot of ground uh, and he does it pretty quickly. And sometimes it's, He's so he's a smooth runner, so you don't feel it the same way you feel some guys. But uh, he he chews up a cushion on a DB and he chews up ground and um, he can really run. The thing that I think is the most impressive is he's got really really strong hands uh, and some of those catches he made are you know that's a those are that's impressive to see. So uh, again, he's another guy that's come a long way since he got here uh, in the OTAs and really started to settle in. And you start to see once these guys know what to do, they start to their talent starts to come out a little bit and. Uh, he's one of those guys that's really, you know, had a nice preseason for himself. It's a danger and all, and, and, and some guys performing too well. It, yeah, you know, yeah, there is. Over. I mean, yeah, there, you you know, you you start to like guys, and all of a sudden you, you cut one and someone else claims them because they see the same things you see. Um, again, I think sometimes that we – we all value our own players, and that that's every team. You know, they, there's every every team has someone like Bryce um, that they that they like and feel like could be a contributor or a developmental player. So um, sometimes it's it's a fear that we place on ourselves, like, oh man, we're gonna we're gonna lose this guy, but everyone else feels the same way. Um, not to say that we wouldn't if if that's the case, but um, 
you know, I think that there's a lot of developmental players that the, you've invested in and, and you hope that their decision, unless they get claimed to an active roster, which again, that's you're, you're getting claimed to a 53. Um, a lot of guys, you know, prefer to stay with where they've invested their time in the practice squad world. So uh, we'll see. There's three screens work so nicely. How intricate is it to get a screen to work well, correctly? Mm -hmm. And how much can you do with that considering the personnel you have? Yeah. Um, First, I mean, yeah, the screens were really have been productive in the preseason in general. They were really good last night. Um, that's a, really a big part of our offense. Uh, those screen, those all those different types of screens. You know, we have the action screens, we have screens to the wise, screens to the back, screens to the receivers. Um, the blocking in space is is something that we work on, and the reason I called a lot of them is because we needed to work on them uh, over the, and teach off of them over the course of the preseason, and. Um, I would even say that for as good as they were, they could be a whole lot better. You know, there's a lot of things technically we need to clean up um, that I thought we left some yards in the field and, and all of them really. So it's a huge part of, a, I think, a successful offense, um, especially when you marry those things up, like the screen to Nick Vanette, you know, is, is off a counter action. So everybody sees and feels counter. Then it looks like a play action pass, and then the ball goes back to the tight end, and we're getting linemen out uh, in space. And so as best we can marry those up in all of our run actions um, with all of our dropbacks uh, and it's easy ways to get the ball in in our players hands and I think that we got enough guys at the skill positions that can can make hay when they got space so um, it'll be a huge part of what we do and, and we'll keep finding ways to to be creative with the screens and keep finding ways to get those guys in space with people in front of them yesterday that the offensive line is set at this point moving yep. into the regular season how did you, when did you come, and how did you come to that decision, particularly with the two right side spots? Uh, it had been trending that direction over the last week. Um, those guys had, had really started to separate themselves and, and play well. You know, in practice, they, they did some nice things. Um, you could see them gaining some confidence. And then this game was important to see if uh, what we saw in practice was real, um, just in terms of their their fundamentals, the technique, all the things that we were looking for. And then, you know, they did they did what they were supposed to do in that game, and that sort of finalized it for me at that point. Um, but they've done a nice job. And, look, we, we haven't seen the, the types of guys that they're going to see. You know, I'm, I know what's headed our way. Um, we got some hellacious defensive fronts we got to face, and uh, we have challenges ahead. And it'll be – but I think that those five guys have, have solidified themselves as um, our offensive line, and, and – They've gotten remarkably better every time we've gone out there. So, um, again, so far so good. Happy with where we're at. Long way to go still, but um, those guys have done a nice job. Back to the screen a minute. It, mm -hmm. You talked about you know being able to get the linemen in space to do their blocking. It seems like that both Skaronski and Raiden have done a pretty good job of being able to get downfield and, and lead that. Is that a particular area where maybe those guys are pretty good as far as either pulling on a run play or, or leading out on screen? Uh, I think they're athletic, and so when you have athletic linemen, you can do a lot of things like that. The pulling is a part of it. Um, being able to get out in space and get attached to defenders in space is is hard. They're they're definitely trying to attach themselves to uh, players that are much more athletic than they are, um, and so there's there's a lot of technique that goes into it. But uh, they're they're naturally athletic players as it is. I mean, Lloyd's really athletic, Peter's really athletic, and and so is Dylan. And so those guys have traits to do some more things for us offensively uh, in the pulling game, in the screen game, and out in space, um, which has been has been good to see. You got to be able to do all those things up front. And, and I think their athleticism lends it lends to success in that in, in that part of the game. How did that heavy package come together? And do you think Daniel acquitted himself well as a skill player? He did, yeah. He sure did. Uh, he had a nice he had a nice block on uh, on the touchdown. I mean, he, he, he buried that guy back in the end zone. And um, we've always been a you know that that play um, plays. It's we call it twelve blast though. It's a. I think we. My dad's been running that play for maybe every every year he's been in coaching. Um, it is not a finesse play. It is it is a downhill, big people attitude play. And I think if you ask my dad, he'd say that play put me through college. Um, but that's been a, that's been a part of what he's done forever and ever, and and just to be able to show that and get a chance to work on it, we hadn't worked on it much. It's a that's a tough situation to simulate. Um, there's a lot of pounds and pressure, and so you don't want to do that a lot in, against your own team um, in in practice. Uh, it tends to get pretty messy, and so we we tried to make sure we got at least a rep or two of it in the game, and I'm glad we did. Uh, Brunskill did a good job. Uh, the first the short yardage one will. We got to clean up Will's footwork. He kind of tripped Dylan as he was pulling around, so we didn't quite get uh, the puller through there. It would have been probably a pretty decent play if we did, but 
uh, it was good. We just needed to practice it and put it on tape and, and teach off of it. So that's why we tried to get a couple reps of it in this last game. A few times about uh, David Martin Robinson, and he obviously showed up again. How mm -hmm. much of a surprise, really, was he? Because you guys obviously saw something in him to want to bring him to camp, but mm -hmm. the amount of production he's been able to give you, how much of a surprise is that? Yeah, it was. It was a surprise. I mean, we, we when we first brought him in in the rookie mini camp, you know, we just I was like, hmm, this this guy seems like he moves pretty well for as big as he is, and it just kind of caught your eye. I mean, again, it's just it's just moving around in shorts, and so that part was was cool to see to start, and then he's really. Um, I mean, ascended. Like every chance he's gotten, he's gotten better. Uh, every chance to make a play, he's made it. Um, he's your he's he's the poster child for what what it takes to make a team as a as a UDFA, and um, he's been fantastic. I mean, there's no there's no discounting his his skill set's real. He's physical in the run game. Um, yeah, surprise is is the word. But uh, as as we've watched, the more I've watched him and got to know him, though, I, I shouldn't be surprised because that's. That's his mindset. Um, he's he's mature. He's professional. It's important to him. He takes coaching. He makes improvements quickly. Um, those things are all traits that uh, would lead guys to be able to you know to, to show well and have a chance. So, uh, like I said before, I think Justin Outen's done a fantastic job with that room from top to bottom. Um, those guys have really 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 matured and as tight ends and really played well over the course of camp. So. Uh, a little tip of my cap to to Jo and, and the job that he's done as well. But uh, that that was a room that went from a lot of questions to one that we feel is now all of a sudden pretty deep and pretty strong and been pretty competitive. So um, that's a good thing. When you regather Wednesday at sixty nine or, or yep. seventy, I know it tends to feel smaller. It's shocking that first time we're on the field. Yeah. Kind of remessage or or rebrand. Like here we are now. This is. It always there might be changes, but this is us. Yeah, you, you, it's it's um, the first time that the 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 twenty twenty four team, for the most part, is is the real team that's going to take the field for regular season football. And so, um, those things it it's a it feels weird because all of a sudden you go out to practice and then there's no benches or bleachers or people, and all of a sudden like where is everybody? You know, you only have a handful of guys, and um, it does it's kind of jarring, but it's also like that's always been the reminder. It's like all right, now it's it's here now. Now we're going. So, um, yeah, I'll remessage a little bit, and, and we'll have a chance to, you know, celebrate the guys that, that make the team. It's, it's you know, it's not always a, a foregone conclusion. It's not something guys take for granted. You know, you get a chance to play another year of NFL football, and um, it's fun. It's a fun, fun process this week when you get finalized. To you know, you get your captains voted for. You, you know, it starts to feel like we're getting ready to go play football. It was only preseason, but. Uh... You guys scored 30 points yesterday. You did 35 regular season games since this franchise has hit the 30 mark. How committed are you to trying to end that? Uh, extremely. Um, yeah, I like to score 30 points every game. That's usually not how it works in the NFL. But, um, you know, I thought it was a good it's a good start for us, I think, to, to instill some confidence that, that what we're doing um, can lead to those outcomes. And, again, it's it's been a lot of the guys at the back of the roster that have, that have manufactured those points at the end of games. And, uh, that part's been cool to see that they've been able to execute at a level that would allow us to go do that. And again, it's you're stepping out on, on the field for an NFL game, and so you know the intent is to go score as many points as possible and try to win the game. And I think our guys have bought into that, and, and they've done a really nice job. So yeah, I would love to, I'd love to end that regular season streak as, as soon as humanly possible, um, and and hopefully make that more the expectation um, than the than the than not. You know, so I I look forward to that. Look forward to the challenge.